from coast to coast and across the UK. Outrage at the sackings of 800 P&O ferry staff. We say no to we say no. Workers and supporters gathered in Hull, we say no. in Belfast, we say no. in Liverpool, and in Dover, where three quarters of the staff live and worked. Among them a couple, dismissed after 31 years combined service, so worried about repercussions that they asked us to speak anonymously with their voices disguised. The way they came on board and locked us out of everything literally made us feel like criminals. Once we then got the announcement and everyone was devastated. It was go to your cabin, get your belongings and get off the ship, take an envelope on your way out. And that was it. Yesterday morning I woke up to a job absolutely normal. This morning we're completely unemployed. We're both together, we've got a mortgage, a child at home, just bought a house last year. Do you feel like you've got any choice but to sign? No, we'll have to sign. The unions are furious at the action P&O has taken and they believe firmly it is illegal. But they think it's action that is likely to change the company's mind rather than the courts. Their argument is if it can happen to them, it can happen to any employee. Well, we want P&O to reverse their decision so that our people are put on board running a safe service. We want our members' jobs back and we want them to change their position. They've ambushed our people, sacked them, put them on the dole, and that's got to be reversed. And if they won't do it, the government's got to do it. Lawyers say P&O appear to be in clear breach of employment law. P&O should have gone through a consultation process with representatives, with the union, in relation to the redundancies. That's set out under statute. By failing to do that, they, what they have done is unlawful. Go, go, P &O! Ministers have demanded an explanation and urged P&O to negotiate. Well, they've taken one of the greatest names in British maritime history, the two greatest initials, P and O, and turned them into P off to their staff. It's not acceptable. They need to get back round the table and they need to deal with this in the way that we would expect in the 21st century. P&O says it's acted in good faith to save the company from collapse and says they didn't consult because reaching agreement would have been impossible. Their former chairman told Sky News the redundancies were dreadful. Don't like it at all, but that's life, isn't it? The company was in a in, in, um, very poor financial situation and it had to do this to save the ships. P&O's holding company, DP World, is owned by the UAE government. Its chairman mixes with British royalty and paid shareholders £270 million two years ago. Well, that's take two. Uh, DP World also spends bit. tens of millions every Number year sponsoring four. Golf's Number European four. tour. Right. They say they're committed to saving P&O, but the brand's reputation may already be sunk. Paul Kelso, Sky News in Dover.